So hi everyone, welcome back to 1010th. Welcome back to Highball Cars and Coffee again. We welcome again uh, Dom from Grip Auto. Hey Dom. So uh, yeah, Dom, so take us through what we're going to do today. Yeah, yeah, so we've got a wonderful collection of cars here for the third Highball Cars and Coffee meet. Uh, it's a beautiful spring morning here, so uh, some excellent cars that we yeah. want to really yeah. get into, excited yeah. to see, and uh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So yeah, looking for what's behind us. As a hint of what's to come, <laughs> lots of cool cars around here. Yeah. So yeah, let's go have a look and uh, we'll see you guys there. Yeah, so Dom, lead yeah. the way. What better way to start off than a beautiful Ford uh, yeah. GT40 here. The beautiful uh, replica, but done immaculately, yep. of course. With uh, some modern features. Wonderful yeah. car. Historic livery as well. Golf racing, golf racing livery. Can't go wrong. Um, yeah, what a turnout. So we're on the grass. It's overflown. It's spilled out onto the grass. Cars everywhere. Yeah, so we've got a beautiful Mini here. This was insane driving in. Looks like it's got some crazy engine modifications. The seat's right back and right low. So I'd love to see underneath the bonnet of this, yeah. And we've got 355 coming in. Oh, yes. So yeah, got something a bit different there. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's go have a look at that. Beautiful paint job there with the uh, authentic dirt on there. <laughs> Fantastic car. Great seeing these that they're driven and the way it's set up. And to see it in Australia as well. It's great to see these, so. Inspired by Dakar much? Yeah. Well, you, these were a spec, I think, back in the day that you could actually get. So, like, yeah, guys were, all, and there's companies overseas that are yeah. building cars like this, so you can get them all, well, jacked up, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and have a look at this. We've got a couple of new Supras next to each other at the moment. There's a bit of a... Brand new Supras, A90 editions. Matching colours. Yep, should we eat your heart out? Tricky to clean, Jap BMW. Yeah, this one's Paul Marek's car. So, uh, yeah, have you guys followed these guys already? Two, yeah, so Supra, pretty hot at the moment. So, yeah, some uh, pretty quirky, I guess you could say, Italian cars here. The iconic Countach and the very, uh, I guess, uh, the interesting Alpha SZ. So, uh, anything you can tell us about these, Tom? Yeah, yeah, so. Um the, these are basically, um, well, uh, Alfa has said, so these were uh, rebodied over, I think now from memory, I've got to, I'm testing myself here, but I think they were uh, an Alfa 75 underneath running gear. Um, so you've got the V6 in them, but they were based on like the, the high performance version. So these are pretty handy and they're a lot lighter weight. Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful car. Um, yeah, also, for sure. It's also left-hand drive, which I just noticed. Yeah. So I guess this would, this would have been an import. Yeah, uh, these are. How uh, they also came in a convertible, uh, which did they? Yeah. That would even look more weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's um, incredible the styling even today. Like mm. you don't see these sort of things in car design today. Yeah. But yeah, and it's a Zagato. Just to yeah, and then we have uh, the Countach over there, mm. which in the gloomy would look a bit black before, but now the sunlight's out yeah. a bit. Looks actually a bit dark blue, so it's quite cool. Yeah, and I love the fact that it hasn't got the big rear wing no on wing. it, so that's an authentic Lamborghini right there. Exactly. What about this, uh, these reflectors? I've seen that they're either on or they're not, they're there or they're not. So what's the deal with that? A couple of differences. So over the years of generations um, and countries, they had to meet certain regulations. Yeah. So there's some of like American cars had in impact bars and that, that yeah. was actually different again. Um, and then different generations were changing the look of the lights. So um, I don't, I think this is a slightly early one, it's not an American spec. Yeah. But, um, it's a clean looking one, so that's that's what I like, yeah. Uh, different heights as well, so the, it, it, not many people may know, but originally these were uh, a lot lower, the first generation of cars were lower in, in, in height, oh, okay. um, and as they progressed, they got a bit taller, so if you park two cars next to each other, two different generations, you'll see the difference, but um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, them three, and the next was an uh, 318 IS, which I owned one of these. Yeah. Yeah, nice little fun car. Got the not so subtle gurney flap there. <laughs> Left hand drive. Left hand drive, yeah, right. So, uh, cool again, always see an E30. Then we have a couple of cool alphas here. 
and one a bit different, a bit special. Fantastic car. This is a car we're going to check out soon. We're actually going to do a bit of a story on and hopefully a bit of a drive on in the future. Um, but a beautiful Alfa Romeo. Yeah, and props to the owner driving from the other side of town to get here. So, uh, shout out to you, Phil. And this, uh, and this car gets used. It gets out on, yeah, really does get on the track. And uh, as you can see from the setup. Yeah, uh, definitely not a garage queen. So we've got the gloves in there, gloves and pen. There you go. Oh, there was a Cosmo here. This one? Oh, there you go. Two Cosmos. Two Cosmos. <laughs> Not often you see that. Here we go. The Unos Cosmo, basically. Yeah. So these had a, um, a 20, you can get them in a 13B as well, but also the 20, 20Bs. A lot of, back in the day, people would grab these, take the engines out, put them in their RX-7s because of the 20B, really? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so your three rotors. Um, so these were pretty high tech. I mean, a lot, a lot of luxury. But yeah, not many on the road. So, and these are BBS wheels that came from factory with it as well. So, but these are, high-end luxury car for, yeah. for then but um interior had like you know tvs in them back in the 90s and and you know tv screens and and electronic everything okay actually that's pretty clean for uh what an early 90s car yeah 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 i really like the way the dash looks here like unless there's a tv behind that uh, piece down there yeah so that all flips up open and there was different grades different specs there we go there's a spec sheet on the, oh, well, on the seat go. there yeah, so yeah. what do we got cosmo Twin turbo, yep. So very much the RX-7 engine, mm. just in a, a body that's a bit more uh, more refined and I guess <laughs> more luxurious. Proper GT car, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see in a clean spec, actually. Yeah, nice and original. Yeah, yeah. This uh, unique Volkswagen parked to another Cosmo. So yeah, I haven't seen one before, and then uh, you see two at the same time. So there you go. And maybe one car that maybe you haven't seen. So Dom, tell us a bit about this. So Volkswagen SP2 has the badge says. Um, these weren't sold here, but these are, uh, are from my recollection, they're specifically to the, I'm going to South American market only. Um, so they're built there for their own market. Um, these are pretty cool, and, and it's a shame that we didn't get a lot more of them because. Um, what size engine has you got in this? These are still your typical. Um, uh, your typical air cooled um, Volkswagen from memory. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's air cooled, but where does it get the cooling from at the front? Because it's like. Can you tell me what, what piece radiators in the front of this thing? Feeling of the engines in the back. We did. I'm pretty sure they are on these, yeah. yeah. It's hard like to tell. Like beetle and everything like... else, yeah, yeah. So, so what, just under the floor or something? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't know enough to sort of confirm it, but. Yeah, yeah, very uh, unique and interesting. So, uh, we're making our way around. We have, uh, oh, not to be left out, I guess the JDM stuff for you guys. So, let's go check out a whole row of uh, GTR. Yeah. Start with uh, a 400R, how about that? Yeah. It, is, it is an authentic um, 400R. Yeah. With the, uh, I think those are the LM wheels LM, yeah, yeah. as well. Wheels, yep, yep. And I'm sure so many people would have had this in Gran Turismo <laughs> racing around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, well. So how was the uh, the job doing this? So this is for sale now, right? Yeah, it is for sale. Yeah. It doesn't lock. So that's good. Speed. Okay. Yeah. What was it like driving in today? Yeah, it was good. It was uh, it's a bit choky and coffee this morning. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many hours did you put in the detailing this thing? I think we've done this like three times now. But yeah. So, what's the going price of one of these? I think it's about half a million bucks. <laughs> at the moment, yeah. yeah. Right. Crazy. So they're just yeah, yeah, yeah. exorbitantly going up. Yeah, up yeah, they are too. Incredible. <laughs> how many of these are there? Uh, I think it's 46 or 47 in the world. Yep. Um, yeah. How that's... many in Melbourne do you think? There's only, this is supposedly the only one in Australia. Oh, well, there you there's go. Yep. Possibly another one hiding up in Queensland somewhere. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. But we're not 100% yeah. sure. Yep, yep. But, um, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's quite a cool car. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's up for sale if anyone has a cool half a million bucks lying around. Might, got, <laughs> might get two of them. Unfortunately, there's only one. Well, we think there's one, maybe two. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you go, guys. One up for sale. Definitely not one to miss if you're in the market. And then, yeah, from special stuff like that, we got the R35s, the R35s, R34, we got, so yeah, another R33, Midnight Purple, V-Spec R34, you guys into that, so, uh, 
Hope we got taking it in. So uh, this here, up a bunch of uh, Panteras, and Dom, what can you tell us about these ones? So three Panteras, uh, obviously earlier versions. So we've got um, three three sitting here nicely, which is great to see. I love Panteras. Um, so again, yeah, American American Ford V8s and the uh, uh, Italian style bodies. So um, that one up the end has got a rubber nose cone, so possibly an American spec, but. Um, uh, fantastic cars, they sound great. Love the, the best paint. Yeah, love the colour of this one. It's not badges either. No, the actually, yeah, this, this would... Don't come with badging. This has probably been a respray, I'd say, okay. at some point, but... Um, yeah, you can see there are different, uh, quite different uh, bumper specs on these ones. And this is most likely an American spec car. Possibly, yeah, yeah. This one almost looks like a kit car with the rubber nose cone, but um, let's have a look. Yeah, take a look at these engines. So the American uh, Ford V8. There we go. And what, what's funny about this is usually these come with a, a well, these come with a, like a, a massive cover that sits over yeah. the top that goes over the engine. And, and every single time I've seen a Pantera, it's taken out. So obviously the owners love to you yeah. know, show off the engine that's sitting there. It's just a huge cavernous space. Yeah. Yep. You Definitely. can hear an echo in here. If you're <laughs> it's so interesting to see and like so easy to work on. Oh yeah. yeah the the like a transmission diff is right there. Engine's right there. Take the take this uh, on it off and uh, yeah, you got access to everything. Mm. Love it how you can have that little bit of the air filter yeah. poking out of the top. Oh, here's, oh, here's one with the cover in. So that's how they that's how they look for factory. Yeah. yeah. It's probably the only one in the world that's Very clean example. Very great clean. Just want to love the car. Um, yeah. We just want to see if you can tell us a bit about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty unique. It was a, a barn find out of Wisconsin in the States. It, it was laid up in 1979 and didn't see daylight till 2010 when it was found. Yeah. Yeah, I've done 10,000 miles when I bought yeah. it, and yep. uh, yep. we've whacked about another 5,000. But Cherry yeah. is all the original yeah. from UV. It's never seen any UV. They're the original carpet. They're um, still like brand new underneath. Yeah, all the. It's actually vinyl, not leather, but it's yeah. all, all original. Yeah. And we see you kept the uh, the car engine cover on as well. Yeah, it's got the. Um, so it's the first uh, picture I've seen usually with what the happens, engine cover in place. Yeah. <laughs> so these just pop out on the mm. fastener yep. again, whip them out in two go. seconds. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of guys stick high rise manifolds and big cows just mean you can't put the covers on. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all the stock original um, motorcraft, um, carburetor, everything on it. They were the two service stickers from Uptown Motors that delivered the cars new in yeah. Wisconsin. Well, so before we painted it, we carefully peeled them off oh, okay. and then put them, put yeah. them back on again. Oh, that's yeah. great, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. nice to see that. Yes, yeah, so amongst a uh, good mix of cars, uh, probably one I, another car I haven't seen before. 205 GDI? 205 GDI, I think everyone's got a bit of a soft spot for these and yeah. uh, what a great little pocket rocket. Is it the original uh, hot hatch? Yeah, yeah. Or I think it came after the uh, Golf GDI, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. But still, this is the one I would have. <laughs> yeah. 1.9? Yeah, definitely a driven. Love the uh, two tone seats in there yeah. actually. Love the red carpet on these as well. Yeah, this is on my bucket list, so. <laughs> yeah, this one looking a bit rough, but still. Probably driven, so uh, kudos to the owner for that. So, a great little car to see. Porsches, Cobras, Clio V6. Another French hot hatch. Again, bucket list car for me. These are fantastic. I think we saw this one last time too with the mid, mid engine. Yeah, look, well, look, at, look at the back seat. What back seat? Mid engine, V6. Uh, so, no, no rear seats, but yeah. There's nothing but engine behind there. Yeah, exactly. I guess fed by uh, these intakes over here. Yeah. So uh, pretty cool to see a uh, Renault hatch in a supercar mid-engine style. So very cool. And uh, after seeing all the GTRs from there, we have the 50th anniversary over here yeah, yeah. in Bayside Blue. So a tribute to the uh, Nissan Skyline and its heritage. So uh, yeah. Oh yeah, a car, I guess in this color it still has a lot of presence. Yeah, actually I, I really like the look of this, it's, um, it does, uh, that's the best word to use, but it's got some good presence, yeah. I think, uh, I think I get this car in this color, but maybe lose the stripe, not, not so much a big fan about the, of the stripe here today. So, uh, yeah, absolute classic Ferrari spec, Rosa Corsa, cream interior, is it a manual though? What, what, uh, yes, gated manual. And if you're not a car enthusiast, when you think of a Ferrari, this is what you sort of uh, mm. this is what you sort of picture, isn't it? Yeah. I think completely authentic here. 
in, uh, in your original seats and uh, paint as well. So quite cool. <laughs> Although a bit of a maintenance nightmare from what I've heard. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you, exactly. you factor factoring the purchase price plus the same plus purchase price again just to keep, to keep up with it. So uh, if you're in the market for a 355, just keep that in mind. Keep in mind as well, the value will go up as uh, every now and then one of them might burn down yeah. to the ground. So. <laughs> not that we wish that upon it, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, not that we haven't seen a few bit of that already. So yeah, 355, again, beautiful Ferrari. If you haven't seen enough Nissans today, here's another one for you. So, Pulsar GTIR. So. So you may know about your WRXs and your Evos, but this was the, uh, the wild child Nissan that came before those in, uh, in the Group A era. Uh, these were individual throttle bodied SR20 engine yeah. turbo, so the only model that needs to produce an SR20 with a quad throttle body basically. So. Explains why it needs uh, so much cooling there. Yep, exactly, exactly. So, they, unfortunately they weren't as well sought out, sought after in, in the days of rallying, so they weren't as successful as your... Um, I thought this car meant to be like a touring car, a rally car? Rally car, basically a group A rallying, so that's when Japanese um, uh, manufacturers started uh, jumping into the World Rally Championship, so you had um, all, the, all the Group A, I guess, so you had your Subarus, Mitsubishi, Nissan, everyone was sort of jumping in on the act, and and uh, this is the N14 that, that um, Nissan built, so it was Baby Godzilla, basically. Baby Godzilla, that's a good way to say, yeah, all the drive, yeah, so it has all the technology. Fun little car too, yeah. 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 Oh, and another fun fact, you know the Rolls-Royce, when you open the door, you've got the umbrella in the door that yeah. pops out? These have the same thing. So, umbrella uh, in there? Umbrella in the door. So on Why does it have an umbrella? <laughs> well, when you're parked up on the World Rally stages and the mechanics have to, all the drivers okay. have to fix the car on the side of the road in yeah, the mud okay. and everything, you pull that out, you open up your umbrella and, and you got yeah. it there ready to go. So uh, basically, yeah, we're gonna, you'll see that Rolls-Royce stole the idea from, from this, and I guess you could yeah. say, really, so. It'd be cool. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed our tour again of uh, Highball Cars and Coffee. Another so, uh, yeah. Dom, any highlights? Yeah, yeah, another beautiful day here at um, yeah. Highball Cars and Coffee. Uh, Volkswagen SP2 would yeah. be a favorite. Yeah, definitely um, seen one before. So yeah, 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 GT40 possibly, but so much to choose from. So yeah. if you're in Melbourne, yeah. next time this is on, head out, because yeah, it's um, one of these. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like the yeah. video. And uh, we'll see you guys again at Motor Classica. Signing out, cheers guys. Cheers.